Now, back to our main news tonight, and the UKIP MEP Godfrey Bloom has had his party's whip withdrawn after branding a room full of women's sluts at a fringe meeting of UKIP's conference. He insisted the remark was a joke, but it overshadowed the speech of his leader, Nigel Farage, who said the comment had gone beyond the pale. Mr Bloom also had a run-in with this programme's political correspondent, Michael Crick, when questioned over the lack of black faces on the cover of their conference brochure. What's appalling about racist. making that point? You, sir, are a racist. Why, why am I a racist for saying there aren't, you there aren't any black people? And you've checked out pe the colour of people's faces? You're disgraceful. You're disgraceful. Well, what's... So you keep maybe making the headlines again because of the actions of a gaff-prone member rather than the rousing speech of its leader, but it seems talk of Bongo Bongo Land and the like is actually resonating with lots of young wannabe politicians. UKIP say their youth membership has doubled in the last year, and this week they held their first ever youth party conference. We've been out to meet the next generation who believe UKIP is the future. Morning. Morning, how are you doing? You all right? I'm Councillor Christopher Wood. I'm the UKIP councillor for Fairham Crofton. I'm 23 years old, so I'm the youngest on the council. Uh, we had the highest turnouts in the whole of Hampshire here, and I won 50.3% of the vote. The bypass is now at the top of the agenda, and that's because how we voted. Exactly. Good that's for you. Thank you very much. Good for you. <laughs> it's amazing, really, to think that one in four people in our village actually went out and voted for me. I actually won the most votes per person um, in the whole country at 23. It's just absolutely incredible. I'm 20, I am a student, just finished my first year at uh, London School of Economics. I'm reading Anthropology. <laughs> that is, no, guys, no, I'm out. we're I'm, giving I'm out, out the wrong image. I agree with you on that one. In my free time, I kind of get a little bit involved with the United Kingdom Independence Party. I get that a lot of us are libertarians and are into freedom and stuff, but I don't want YI to be seen by the public as like this bunch of raving free hippies that just are wild. Like we are normal people and we have morals. I am extremely proud to have seen the future of our party secured by the almost incessant growth of our youth wing. When I first joined, I remember my school friends like, oh my god, you're Indian, like, why are you joining UKIP? They hate you guys. I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's wrong, no. Uh, and then explain the whole immigration policy to them, like, you know, the fact that we want equal immigration for everybody in the world. We don't want the EU to have preference. Also, we want to, like, limit it because, hello, we live on an island. It's kind of small. Morning. Morning. England's green and pleasant land is being built over to house people from abroad who are coming in and challenging us for jobs. You have to have a controlled immigration policy, and we don't. You see pollution increasing. You see traffic increasing. You see congestion. You see public services being put under more strain. This is all immigration. It's fundamentally wrong. I'm Demi Cole. I'm a um, Conservative defector to UKIP. I voted for the Conservatives to have a European referendum and they haven't given it to us and that's not what democracy is about. Uh, uh, democracy yeah. is about listening to the people. Even looking for a Sunday job, I spent hours going around every shop handing out CVs. All the shop staff, Eastern European. There's no, young people can't get jobs. Uh, my name is Alexandra Swan, I come from Surrey, I live in London. I used to be Deputy Chairman of Conservative Future, the youth wing of the Conservative Party. Uh, I came across UKIP and realised they have such a vibrant uh, youth wing. My father's originally from Council Estate in Yorkshire. Uh, we're from a very, very Labour area, very Labour family. But he's a very much Thatcherite Conservative. I remember him explaining income tax to me when I was about nine years old and how if you earn more money, you then pay, not only are you paying more, as a percent, you know, your percentage will be a higher amount, but you're actually paying an you know, increased percentage. And I thought this was like this complete injustice when I was about nine or ten. I hate to sound you know, hyperbolic, but it is by a better name slavery. Love us or hate us, you could be bringing young people into politics, and that can only be a good thing. Young people need to voice their concerns, they need to stand up for what they believe in, they need to fight for what they think is right. Whether they like it or not, and they don't, do they? We are a political force. Today we've had the Young Independence Conference at the Old Sessions House in Clerkenwell. Really exciting day, it's the first conference that Young Independence has had. 70% of the kind of congregation were new faces, which just shows how we are appealing to you know, a broader spectrum of people. Make up, get it ready, let's go to the wire ball. It's nice that we're all gonna kind of just get a chance to bond and actually get to know all our other younger members. We had a lot of young speakers. I mean, the way it engaged with the question on grammar schools, I really enjoyed. You can see how it affects ordinary people. 
and and how... It is. There are more KFCs in every town than there are grammar schools, and that's yeah. a problem. The turnout and the number of young people here and like the vibes we're getting from everybody, it just gives us a lot of hope for the future, like, that we will be able to help it go from strength to strength. Okay, great. Everyone, make sure you the camera. So what is it about politics that appeals to young people and what influences their choice of party right now? I'm joined by Sanya Jitandi and Chris Wood, two of the UKIP members featured in that report, as well as young members of other political parties, Helena Dollimore from Young Labour and Conservative Party activist Robert Winterton. Sanya Jeet, um, when we just played the video of Godfrey Bloom hitting Michael Crick, um, yeah. you, you laughed. And we saw you listening to him in the, in, in the piece. I mean, do you think this is all just a bit of a laugh? No, not at all. Um, I mean, obviously, he's a representative of UKIP. He has a lot of responsibility. And I think that the action that um, Nigel Farage and Stephen Crowther, our chairman, have taken is right. He, he needs to be disciplined. Are you, are you not um, really embarrassed by, by yeah, his behaviour? Yeah, no, I have to say. I mean, on a personal level, great guy. Love him. However... Really? No, he's a funny guy. Um, but the thing is... Obviously, stuff he says is offensive. People do take offence, and it's not OK. But do you think he, he appeals to your generation? Um, not... But he's and not people like Roger favorites. Helmer, who we had on earlier, you know? I have to say, obviously, they're not some of our favourites. Like, we do love the likes of, like, Nigel, who obviously is very charismatic, uh, stands for amazing things, is a responsible human being, and stands for really great policies. Um, and it's people Chris, like him that we love. Chris, how do you feel about this today? I mean, it's been a total mess, hasn't it? I mean... It's unhelpful, but it's not detracting away from the policies. It's not detracting away from the work that councillors in UKIP do across the country. Um, that work goes on regardless of what one individual says. See, I mean, you're, you're, you're sounding like... Every other politician. I'm a UKIP councillor. I mean, in, the, in that, uh, I'm you know, doing you're, you're telling the party daily. line and you're saying what a good UKIP politician should come on here and say. No. But, you know, you're, you're in your early 20s. You don't need to be doing that, do you? No, but that's the thing. As Nigel said in his closing statement today at conference, um, he was saying that, yes, like UKIP, like, we do promote people saying what they think and not having to feel that they need to adhere to the party line. But he was saying that you need to say it in, like, a civilised way and, you know, be responsible and... Don't be rude. Like, Godfrey has been rude. Um, but that's the thing. We have so many... We are doing so well, and it is a shame that one man has kind of played detriment. To Robert this. Winston, this is a problem for you, isn't it? If, if, if young UKIP are attracting these sorts of people who would have traditionally gone to the Young Conservatives, you're in trouble. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I mean, every, every party is going to have some sort of youth wing. Um, I'd say the Conservative Party has actually still got a, a very strong youth wing and, and has done for years now. I mean, Chris, what, you were a young Conservative, weren't you? I was, yeah, but unfortunately I went to go and join the Royal Navy and you've decided to cut the number of ships we have. A Type 22s have gone. You're not really pushing forward enough ships. You've cut the British Army by a fifth. No one in the country can really support that. I mean, I mean that's all part of our, of our deficit reduction plan. But, uh, I mean, the, the main thing about the youth wing politics is actually, though, though stereotypically young people are not seen as conservatives, we have got the strongest youth wing. We've got the most members, we've got the most university societies, and we've grown the quickest since the 2010 election. What have you made of this? Um, I think sort of today has just shown exactly why, what puts off young people from getting involved in politics. We've seen absolutely disgraceful, disgraceful comments. Just stop where you are for a second, because I think we've got a slight problem with your sound. We'll come back to you in a, in a, in a second while we, while we just sort that out. Let, let's talk about... Your leader, who you, you say you admire hugely, um, Nigel Farage. Now, last night on Channel 4 News, Michael Crick uh, revealed some suggestions about his past. Yeah. What he thought when he was young, a bit younger than, than, yeah, than you guys. Teenager, yeah. and, and what he said about that is, look, I regret everything I said when I was 17. Um, you know, implying basically that, you know, once you, once you grow up, nothing you said when you were young matters. I mean, what does that say about what you think now? And, and how you will feel about what you, what you think now in 20 years' time? Um, obviously, people do grow up. Um, in fact, in the last year, I think my political views, for example, have changed. Um, my flatmates are all very left-wing, kind of Marxist um, yeah, supporters. And even they've said that I've changed so much in the last year. So it's just but you talked about your up. friends saying, you know, why are you in, in, the, in this yeah. party and how they regard you, Kim, mm -hmm. as, as a party with dodgy views mm -hmm. on race. How do you feel about the fact that Whatever he thinks now, he may have said things that you'd have found offensive, really offensive. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, and they do change, and I'm sorry, but... So you don't find that, that worrying, whatever he said no, when he was a kid? not really. You have to remember what he said was... The head teacher and the deputy head have both said that they actually dismissed it completely. Um, and that's encouraging for us. If the deputy head could dismiss it, basically what they were doing were winding up... Yeah, but what, he, what, what Nigel Farage has also said was, look, that was then, I was young... 
only a little bit younger than you are now, and that he's changed all his views since then, as if it was sort of the foolishness of youth. What he was doing and I just yeah. wonder whether you ever worry that may maybe what you think now is the foolishness of youth. But Not at all. If you go around and talk to my residents in Stubbington and Hillhead, they will tell you the things that I'm working on are exactly the things that they are interested in, which is why I won 50.4% of the vote. Now, that's not a case of a young person going out there and taking a process vote. That's an awful lot of hard work, and that's what UKIP's doing across the country. Helen, let me, let me try you again. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, how do you appeal in this? Because in the argument, in the political argument, the, fa the, the argument that is being made is, you know, uh, that y there is sort of a strange alliance between UKIP uh, and, uh, and, and Labour come the next election. I think that what we've seen today is exactly the sort of thing that puts young people off getting involved in politics. We've seen Godfrey Bloom make really offensive comments about women and then the MEP you had earlier on the programme making deeply offensive comments about rape and I think that's exactly the sort of thing that puts young people off. I think the way that we appeal to young people is by talking about the issues that matter to all people. I don't think young people should be pigeonholed as caring particularly about specific young people's issues. But isn't that, isn't that all young people tend to, tend to demonstrate about? You know, no, I don't. I think that if you, I think whilst those issues are of importance to young people, they also are concerned about living standards, about jobs and the economy. Um, and that's exactly what Ed Miliband's going to be setting out in conference this week, how we can tackle the falling living standards in this country. You know, we've seen out of the 38 of the 39 You, you months, know what he's going to be saying to you. You've had the briefing too. C Cameron's been yes. in government for 39 months, and of 38 of those, people's living standards have been falling. And young people, just like all people, hard-working people across this country, they want to know what party is going to tackle that for them and which party is going to stand up for the hard Let, let me just very briefly ask you, I mean, do, do you think you are the sort of the strange minority in your generation? Like, do, do most of your friends just think you're weird being in yes. politics? <laughs> yes, <No. laughs> absolutely. Yes. Most people are not as interested in politics as we are. No, I disagree. OK, maybe it's just my peer group or something, but when I was at school, we had, like, more collections and stuff all the time. We were always really encouraged to get involved okay. in, like, following yeah. politics. I, I, Same at university. I agree. Yeah. I, agree. I mean, since, since I've gotten to university, I mean, I, I study, I study a, a political subject. Um, so I, I'm bound to be surrounded by people that are sharing my, my uh, view on politics. But I, I also think that even people that don't have an interest in politics understand it. It's just something I, I believe in okay. and something I'm interested in. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed for coming Thank in. Thank you. Jackie.